the question is, how could something so significant and profound as that, how could the Watchtower have it so wrong? On the one hand, they teach the truth about God, about the basic doctrines. We know it's the truth. How could they be so wrong on something as important as the parousia? Well, the Apostle Paul had something to say about that. To the uh, Thessalonians, he foretold that, or forewarned them not to be quickly shaken from their reason. If they got reports that sounded official and weighty, he said, do not be shaken from your reason. If you get a, a, a written letter as though from us saying that the day of Jehovah is here and the presence of Christ, he said, it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. Well, the Watchtower teaches that the apostasy Paul was referring to was the apostasy that developed shortly after the first century and really uh, coalesced when uh, Constantine more or less hijacked Christianity in uh, 325. He became the, uh, the head of the church, you might say, because he arbitrated and decided on, on a key doctrinal issue of the identity of God and Christ. But if that were true, it wouldn't really serve as much as a, a time, much of a time marker. Paul said the apostasy must come first, intimating that it would be an immediate prelude to the actual presence of Jesus. Well, I've written some, somewhat on this, I'd say rather extensively, but the Watchtower has brought the truth to light the entire, from the time of Russell. It's, it's allowed Jehovah to accomplish a harvest work of anointed ones who have been uh, revived, you might say. At the same time, though, the organization has become apostate. This month of October 2010 marks the ninth year since the Watchtower was exposed of having carried on a secret partnership with the United Nations because it was an accepted and approved uh, NGO associated with the United Nations, which required it to propagandize in behalf of the United Nations, to use a portion of its uh, ability to, to reach the public, its capacity, I should say, to publish positive information about the United Nations. And of course, the Watchtowers condemned Christendom for their supporting the United Nations, and they've pointed out rightly that that's an act of apostasy. And the Watchtower has been guilty of the very same thing. Even though the relationship was dissolved still, uh, they're, they're doing the same thing in a much more subtle way in, in, in various ways. I won't go into it on this video. But that's the apostasy. And Paul went on to say that this apostasy was the result of a man of lawlessness submerged within Christ's congregation. It said he would display himself in the temple of the God. The temple being Christ's congregation. So, in, in context there, these false declarations that the day of Jehovah is here and the presence of Christ emanate from this man of lawlessness. And the Apostle Paul said that Satan supports his man of lawlessness with every lying deception and unrighteous uh, thing and, and a lying sign and portent. Well, in order to establish his fake parousia, Satan is every bit capable of orchestrating a war and bringing about the persecution of the Bible students back then to make it seem as if it was the fulfillment of prophecy, all for the purpose of deceiving Jehovah's chosen ones into believing a foe Parousia. And didn't Christ Jesus warn that it would be possible to deceive even the chosen ones in this matter of Jesus' return? Well, I'd like to uh, read a scripture to you in Isaiah. It's really the, the title of this video. Let me clear out my email here and open up my... In the 42nd chapter of uh, Isaiah... Oh, I'm going to run out of time here. Jehovah asked 
a searching question. He says, hear you deaf ones and look forth to see you blind ones. Who is blind if not my servant? And who is deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as the one rewarded or blind as the servant of Jehovah? It was a case of seeing many things, but you did not keep watching. It was a case of opening the ears, but you did not keep listening. So Jehovah is saying that his people are blind. They're the ones rewarded. Jehovah's Witnesses have seen many things from God's word and appreciate the deep and weighty things. What's he say? You didn't keep watching. We've heard many things from God's word. We didn't keep listening. Jehovah's Witnesses may be inclined to pawn that off on somebody else, but don't Jehovah's Witnesses claim to be the servants of Jehovah? Jehovah is addressing his servants. Who is as blind as the servant of Jehovah and the messenger whom he sends? Well, this was a long time ago. We've, we've been enlightened since 1918. <laughs> Read the context there. Jehovah is addressing his people at a future time when they're in detention and in the holes, you might say, in hiding. Jesus said the holy place would be destroyed. God's people would be scattered. So go into the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, when Jehovah addresses his people. Go down in verse 8, which says, Bring forth a people blind, though eyes themselves exist, and the ones deaf, though they have ears, and let the nations be collected together. So that is during the time of this international crisis. That's when Jehovah brings forth his blinded people who had been imagining that Christ had returned in 1914. And suddenly they find themselves completely waylaid. But Jehovah being the savior and the grand instructor will then speak to his people in that captive condition. So that's, that's why I am an outcast and an apostate because I call attention to this great fraud that has been perpetrated through the Watchtower Society upon Jehovah's Witnesses. Of course, my words don't carry much weight now, but I'm certain in the near future uh, they will. Thank you for listening. Though. We appreciate from the scriptures that immediately before Jesus is to return, there will be a revival of the truth. Christianity has become corrupt just as Israel became corrupt with its idolatry and paganism. In fact, at the time that King Josiah arose to the throne, he had the temple cleansed. It had been dilapidated and abandoned and uh, the high places sprung up where people went to worship. And so uh, the truth was concealed. But as they were cleansing the temple, someone found a copy of the original law. And this was quite a revelation, apparently. And Josiah had the law read to him. And as a consequence, he held a great Passover, the likes of which had never occurred in all of Israel. So it was a restoration of the worship that Jehovah established through Moses. That's similar to what has occurred with the Watchtower Society. For centuries, the Bible had been obscured, but with the coming of Charles Russell and his small group of Bible students, the original truth began to shine forth again. And you might say a great Passover has been held, uh, meaning the Lord's evening meal. So a, another appearance, a grouping of anointed ones have appeared on the earth this past century. But Paul said the apostasy must come first. Was he referring to the apostasy that came to fruition with Constantine? Well, that wouldn't be much of a road marker, would it? The apostasy must come first and the man of lawlessness be revealed. According to Paul, the manifestation of Jesus would expose this man of lawlessness and destroy him. Now, the Watchtower says, of course, the clergy are this man of lawlessness. And apparently they think that they have done the exposing of this man of lawlessness through their Watchtower publications. Well, consider this. 
The man of lawlessness, as I had mentioned, sits down in the temple of the God, declaring himself to be a God. Now, the Watchtower well knows that the temple, the spiritual temple, is in reference to the congregation of Jesus, and all anointed members are part of that temple. Well, the Watchtower says the clergy claim to be part of this temple, spiritual temple of God. They claim to be in this spiritual temple. But that's not what Paul said. He said the man of lawlessness sits down in the temple of God. Another interesting clue as to uh, the identity of this man of lawlessness is the fact that Paul referred to him as the son of destruction. The only other reference in the Bible to that term, the son of destruction, is in the gospel. Jesus Christ referred to Judas as the son of destruction. That's not to say that Judas is this man of lawlessness. He was long gone before Paul issued this prophecy. But the interesting connection is that Judas was an intimate associate of Jesus Christ. He was one of the twelve hand-picked apostles. And of course, he betrayed Jesus. On the Passover night, it says, Satan entered into him. So, this man of lawlessness, who is also referred to as a son of destruction, must be an intimate associate within Christ's congregation. An important individual or grouping of individuals. But this message that Paul referred to, saying, do not be quickly shaken from your reason, it emanates from this man of lawlessness declaring that the presence has begun. Go back to Jesus' prophecy about the conclusion of the system of things. He emphasized over and over the need to be alert and to not be deceived. Many will come on the basis of my name. Jesus said, do not be misled. There will come those saying the due time has approached. Well... <laughs> Isn't that the message of the Watchtower? The due time is approached. That's been their message for over a hundred years. Have Jehovah's Witnesses been shaken from their reason, as Paul advised us not to be? Well, we'd have to say yes, if we're honest. If you have ever read Macmillan's book, it wasn't published by the Society, but he was one of the officers in the Watchtower back in 1914 and all the turmoil that went on and his book is entitled faith on the march and he he related that he personally he was a very humble man apparently he and some of the other brothers were so confident that god's kingdom was going to rapture them up and they were going to be gathered together to christ like paul said do not be quickly shaken from your reason as, as regards the presence and our being gathered together to him Oh, Brother Mac and some others sold their winter clothes in the summer of 1914, thinking by the winter of 1914 uh, they would be gathered together. Well, apparently they had to buy some new winter clothes. What about Jehovah's Witnesses in more recent times? 1975? Some 30 some years ago, the Watchtower had built this anticipation that 1975 was going to be the day of Jehovah. And a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses were shaken from their reason, sold their homes, quit their jobs. That in itself is, is a noble thing. You know, Christ told his followers to leave all behind, go preach. But in this instance, it was done because of the feeling of the imminence of the day of Jehovah, because of what the Watchtower taught through their verbal messages at conventions, through written apostolic-like letters in the Watchtower magazine. And so a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses, consequently, were stumbled and are still being stumbled as a shakeout from that. So here, 
<laughs> Here, here's the, the paradox. Jehovah's people know the truth, but are under this influence of this man of lawlessness who is promoting a fake parousia. And it's accompanied by Satan with every powerful work and lying sign and portent. What's the point? Satan wants to deceive us into thinking the parousia has begun, just as in the first century. Some were teaching the resurrection has already begun. Well, the Watchtower teaches <laughs> the resurrection has already begun. They say it began in 1918, invisibly, of course. So the reason God allows this, Paul went on to explain that it is an operation of air that God allows to go forth to those that they may get to believing the lie because they took pleasure in unrighteousness and did not accept the love of the truth. If we're to love the truth, we would have to know the truth, right? Jehovah's Witnesses know the truth, the truth, the doctrinal truth about Jehovah and his relationship with Jesus. We know what the kingdom is going to do. We know what God's purpose is for the earth and all of that. Jehovah's Witnesses know the truth, but they also have accepted this operation of error. And I should point out, well, Jehovah's Witnesses will be quick to say, well, no, no, we have all the prophecies, World War I, you know, nation rose against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and food shortages. But what did Paul warn? That Satan with, would use all of his wicked power to create this false sign to convince us that the presence has already begun. That's exactly what the Watchtower has done. So this man of lawlessness is an element within the Watchtower society itself. And it has to have had been there from the beginning. So it can't be a, an individual, but a grouping. There has been rumors to the effect that Charles Russell was a Mason. And certainly there, there is evidence in the early watchtowers that there were Masonic influence upon those early Bible students. Now, Russell said he wasn't a Mason. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps he was under the influence, though, of some in his intimate association. Because it is the intention of the Masons, who are associated with the crown, to infiltrate political and religious organizations, to steer it for their own ends. More than likely, that explains the presence of this man of lawlessness. Well, what about the apostasy that comes first? Well, this October will mark the 10th year since the Watchtower dissolved their NGO partnership with the United Nations. And for 10 years prior to that, the Watchtower had been in what the United Nations itself calls a political partnership. All NGOs who are accepted and to whatever level, associate or consultative level, the, the Watchtower happened to be an associate level NGO, one of the lower ranking, but it was still incumbent upon them to carry political propaganda in behalf of the United Nations, to use a portion of their resources to reach the public with positive information about the United Nations. Well, for decades, the Watchtower has condemned the churches of Christendom for their political alliance with various uh, nation, political governments, as well, particularly, the United Nations. So what the Watchtower did is, according to their own writings, it's apostasy. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses may object to that, but the facts are there. In fact, when this... Uh, it's interesting, you know, this was just a month after 9-11. That's when The Guardian came out with this news article about uh, the Watchtower's association with the UN. So I think it probably would have had a much bigger impact throughout the uh, media had, you know, the reverberations of 9-11 not been going on. And, and 
they were gearing up for the invasion of Afghanistan. The financial markets were about ready to collapse, as they are now. We're back where we were 10 years ago. So the, this news story sort of went by the wayside, although hundreds of Jehovah's Witnesses read it on the Internet, apparently, and they began writing to the Watchtower and calling. And the Watchtower came out and said, no, 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 we, we just uh, became an NGO so we could gain access to the UN's library. It's just a bunch of opposers who are stirring up all this stuff. And that, my friends, is a lie. At the time, it was not necessary to become an NGO to gain ac access to the UN library. If you were a researcher, you could, you could go in. Now it is necessary, but that's because of 9-11, ironically. At any rate, there are other uh, aspects of this watchtower's apostasy. So the evidence is there. Jehovah's Witnesses have been entrusted with the truth. There as a restoration of original primitive Christianity. Jehovah is accomplishing his purpose through them. Yet at the same time, there is this man of lawlessness in the midst of the organization. And he has sort of a trap set up for us by convincing Jehovah's Witnesses that the presence is, has already begun. What do you suppose will take place when the authentic presence begins? It will be an enormous test of faith. The Watchtower has inculcated in Jehovah's Witnesses this mindset that they are the sole explainers of the Word of God and they are the channel. Well, how will you, how will Jehovah's Witnesses feel when it comes to light that the, you know this, there's a huge disconnect here? And I'm talking about in the future the signs that Jesus, or that Jehovah's Witnesses think have been fulfilled in 1914 are presented in a much more convincing way. Nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom, food shortages, earthquakes. And we're, we're on the verge of that. We're on the verge of a global financial collapse that will bring civilization to its knees. They're gearing up for war with China and Russia. Don't be fooled. That's what's going on with the Middle East. They're ringing with military bases, ringing around the nations. Well, first comes Syria and then Iran with the ultimate goal of taking down China and, and Russia and establishing a one world government. That's what's happening. Meanwhile, Jehovah's Witnesses have been led to believe that all prophecy has been fulfilled and all that we're waiting for is for the United Nations to destroy organized religion. Meanwhile, look what's happening in the world. And the Watchtower doesn't have anything to say about it. They say the time of the end began in 1914. Well, if that's true, according to Daniel, the, the scroll of Daniel will be opened up during the time of the end. Yet, according to the Watchtower, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, they have no idea who the King of the North is, and it's wise not to speculate. That's what they say. So for 20 years, they haven't had one word to say about this significant aspect of prophecy, even though they say we're in the time of the end. So at some point, I'm not advocating a, a rebellion or an exodus from the Watchtower, but pointing forward to the presence of Christ. And at that time, it will be necessary for Jehovah's Witnesses to come to grips with the fact that they've been misled by the very institution that has taught them the truth. So the point from Jehovah's standpoint, we'll have to demonstrate our faith in a way that we have not up to this time. Because the Watchtower has made it easy, haven't they? They've, they've laid it all out for you. You know, you go to meetings and here's the material you'll be studying and you underline the answers and raise your hand. And here's a little group. We're going to go out in service and here you can get in this car group and we'll, we'll take you out door to door and we'll give you somebody to work with. And here's a little sermon to say to the householder and, and all of that. It's all laid out. And you know, you can pretty much sleepwalk through the whole thing. So Jehovah is going to require a test to see if you really love the truth. And that will come about at the authentic presence of Jesus Christ and the discrediting and collapse of the Watchtower Society.
Thank you for watching this edition of the Apocalypse Report.